Welcome to the Wooden Work Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Taylor. We have Paul here, JCR Build, and today we have a special guest on AJ Carpentry. AJ, how you doing? Good, thanks you for coming on. So, AJ, just tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, what it what sort of woodwork join you be, what is it what is it you do type thing? Yeah, my name's Adam James Sanger. And I'm 22 years old and I just recently started subcontracting as a carpenter and I work on new homes, residential houses for new home builders. We mainly do single story and double story houses in New South Wales. And it's usually yeah, stick framing and I'll do the carpentry from the frames to the fit off stage of the build. So you... You, so oh, you yeah, stay nice. pretty much when you're doing a job, you're staying from the first fix when you're erecting the stud walls or the framing, and then you're staying all the way through to do the finished yeah. carpentry as well. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So, what, yeah, what's amazing. your sort of favorite part of the build? Do you prefer first fix, second fix, kitchen fitting? I, what's, what's your sort of favorite? I like the, the, the second fix, that's fix out, isn't it? Uh, second fix, generally, yeah, it's that thing. Yeah, this is an this is an English term, mate. <laughs> they don't they don't do first or second fix in Australia. All right, right, there you go. They, uh, so, so first first fix do. generally would be things like you're doing your stud walls, your plaster boarding, putting all the wires in ready, and then your second fix generally is then everything then gets connected up together. So then all the electrics go live, the plumbing goes live, and then you put things like yeah. skirting boards, architraves. That's classed as second fix. And then your finished joinery would be your more bespoke. And then also things like fitting your kitchen or that sort of thing. So this is good to know for the American audience and the Australian audience. Yeah, this is how you should do it in the UK, like the UK's. <laughs> this is how this is how you this is how you should be uh, uh, termed. Um so AJ, I've been um looking at your Instagram and your social media side of things and I see you as filming NF build last week, and you do you do some filming also? Yes, yeah, so with your social I've, media. Yeah, I've started interviewing a few different people. So I met Con the Builder and NF Build last weekend, and I just spoke to them about what they do and how they got into the trade. And it's I just realised there wasn't much out there for carpenters, and there wasn't much out there for like business stuff for carpenters. So because when I started subcontracting, you have to become a sole trader. And yeah. Yeah, there wasn't much information out there or advice for carpenters in Australia doing it. There was a lot of stuff out there for Americans, American contractors and uh, plumbers and electricians, but I couldn't find anything for carpenters. So I decided to start trying to make an educational type of page and things that oh, okay. out there, I would just share that. That's not a bad idea. And I also, oh, yeah, wanted, nice. I also wanted my social media to be like a how-to page for my apprentice in the future. So it's a bit easier to teach them. So on my YouTube, yeah. I'll probably have how-to videos on how I do how I do everything so that they can just watch it and it's a bit easier to train them. And then on my Instagram, I'll just have educational videos for for just anyone and everyone and it's just to promote the fact that I know what I'm doing and yeah, yeah. It's helpful. so you're thinking long you're thinking pretty long term then right so because you obviously yeah. you're thinking in five years time two years time whatever I'm gonna have an apprentice and I can't just you're not gonna be able to give him as much time as you should be able to give him and you can sort of kind of show him and then hey mate look watch this video at lunchtime or whatever or tonight come back we're doing this tomorrow and then you'll already be clued up, and you'll know he'll know how to do it your way because it's your video, right? Yeah. That's pretty smart. It's, it's I like quite, that. Yeah. It's quite a clever concept. And then, and then it, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. And then if I can't train him, then the other person training him can use that video and say, use that as training. Because I noticed yeah. when I started, a lot of people, it's hard, it's hard for them to teach and 
and a lot of builders are under the pump. They're trying to get the job done, and then they can get really frustrated at the apprentice. But you know, if yeah, it's classic, trouble, classic situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quickly yeah, nice. Video. So, how do you, how big are you planning to get? Because obviously, you you've seen in the future, and you've obviously got some good ambition, and you know where you're going to get to. Are you planning to do a building company, or are you just going to go big with a carpentry company, or What's your plans? At the moment, I'd like to get my builder's license. And then I'm not sure whether I want to build new homes for clients or, or to build spec houses and sell them. Yeah, spec houses I, meaning, what do you mean like by spec, spec houses? So where I am, they build speculative homes. So the builders speculate that there's a demand for new homes in the area so yeah they'll just build, build one you. out of their own pocket and then put it up for sale and sometimes yeah they yeah that and just build 10 or 20 at a time yeah some people a lot of people around here seem to only build one or two okay all right so that, yeah that's cool that's cool so you're going to get your builder's license have a builder's like a building company in the future and then you've got all your training materials there for you guys yeah. Yeah, nice. How, how old are you, mate? 22. I'll be 23 in May. You look 32. <laughs> you look my yeah. age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> I get that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, um, cool. See, I quite like that idea of the, as you say, going back to me videoing of the, because obviously I do, I'm going to start doing like a basic build video to show people how you can do it with like, I've bought a load of cheap tools off. Facebook and what have you, you know, like I bought a ten pound circle saw, just to show you can do it without and not. You don't need the thousand pound yeah. uh, festival veil saw that I've got. So I want to do a full build series like that. But I like your idea because obviously when you're trying to teach someone, because obviously I've I've taught quite a few apprentices over the years, or you know, or younger lads. I mean, we're always learning. Don't get me wrong, but as you say, it's very hard sometimes when I'll go into a company as a sub as a subby myself, I'll be running a job or a site for them. Mm. And yet there'll be a young lad there that wants to learn. Um, and he wants to learn. And the thing yeah. is, it's like, well, how would you actually go about trying to, I'm trying to give them as much time as I can because they, if they're willing to learn, I'll give them the time. But the problem is it then takes it away from me. I'm then not doing what I need to do in regards to if I'm actually doing some work or running the site, because you can't do two things at once. And it is very hard, and unfortunately, I do feel that a lot of youngsters get neglected um, to the point where, I mean, I've seen lads that are qualified, and they're absolute shite. You're like, have you never been shown how to use a chisel before? You're like, oh, yeah, we do it like this. Like, no, mm. you've not been. They clearly just told, you chop out a door like this, and then that's it. They're not given, they're not shown why you use a chisel a certain way, or how to do it, or whatever you know the, like the process of chopping out a hinge and you get them to do it and you're like i can have a little bit with the spoon myself they're just that bad <laughs> um but no i've seen it because like when I've, i said there was one that i had on um he just reached out on facebook he, he didn't have enough um what do you call it he needed more information to finish off his qualification because he couldn't he didn't have certain parts covered for the company he was working for and he just said oh can i come and work for you so I found him on a Facebook group and I just got him in to help me for a few days here and there. Gave him what, and he, the lad was superb. I mean, he was really good, the lad. He still comes and does work for me every now and again now. Um, but like the first time, which we did a load of oak doors. And the first job was, he goes, like, well, crack on. And he got his router out to do the hinges. I'm like, nah, man, here's a chisel. Crack on. I want, you to, I want to see you cut one out on a chisel first. He's like, why? I said, because if you can't do it with a chisel, you're not doing it with a router. You've got to learn how to do it properly first with the hand tools, and then you can use the router. Because admittedly, I use routers, I use the trend hitch jig when I'm doing doors. But if I've only got, I don't know, two or three doors to do, I'm not getting the router and all the jigs out. I'll just whip a chisel out, an inch chisel out, and I'll just cut them out of my hands. And I do believe that, you know, you should be able to do things the right way. And if, if there, there's not a lot of information, as you say, to there's a million pictures on Facebook about how, how I cut out a hinge, all the jokes on the Carpenters group, but how many people actually show you how to do it? And that's why I like your concept of you. Are you doing these sort of videos then? 
to as a learning aid because there's not that many basic things out there, is there? No. Mm, yeah, definitely. How long have you been subcontracting, mate? This is my first year, so yeah, cool. So, uh, you just subcontracting to one builder, two builders, or just one builder at the moment, and that's all I really. Oh, actually, no, two builders, but one builder most of the time. The builder that I was previously employed by actually re- is retiring, so whenever he needs, he's only got two houses on the go that he needs finished. Yeah. So I'll just go back like one or two, one day here and there just to ha- finish off a few things for him. But mostly it's just one builder. How old is he now? Is he getting on? Yeah, I think he's 58. 58? Oh, that's not bad to retire at 58. <laughs> yeah. oh, he's, he's, he's retiring from building for clients. I think he just wants to build just one or two houses per year and for and himself and make some money, yeah. Homes, yeah. Yeah, take this less stress, a bit easier. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Nope. So what social medias are you on at the moment, mate? I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. I started TikTok last Friday, actually, and I'm amazed at how fast you can grow on there. Like, last Friday, I started yeah. and uploaded all the same videos from Instagram, and I've got uh, 2,500 followers. And six hundred th- over six hundred thousand views that's on good. all the videos. That's very good. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, that's just just. I mean, I thought mine was, mine was quick, but I got yeah, to nice. just over the two thousand within, like as you say, about ten days, and it just seems to have plateaued off. And it, there's just it's just no movement whatsoever on TikTok now. I found it's gone stale. Uh, but it's, so you're just up, like you're repurposing your videos straight from Instagram to TikTok. Yeah. So initially, you've done all the work, you've done all the recording, you've done everything. You're just spending the ten minutes each video just to re- to upload it, right, or whatever. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Excellent. What about YouTube? How are you going on that? Well, I was trying to do one video a month because I just didn't have time to edit. So I I asked a videographer who also edits the videos if he could do a video for me each month and I just pick different topics so the first one was my trailer tour and how much all the tools cost and yeah the trailer tour and the next one was how how to become a subcontractor in New South Wales all the steps you need to take to get there and then I've got another one that's going to be coming out that's uh I think it's how I get my work yeah cool yeah well what uh... <clears throat> One of my, if YouTube's a different beast in itself, it takes a long time to edit. What what software are you using? Oh, uh, I think he uses Adobe Premiere, but he, yeah, he it's it was a lot easier just to get him to do it. And one video a month, he was charging seven hundred dollars. So I would make sure, like, I'd save up for the whole month and then just pick a topic that I felt needed to be out there or questions that needed to be answered, mm. and. I would make a video on those topics, and then he's so, he edit edit it's all edits yeah. all of it for you. Is yeah, it good? So, Is it worth the seven hundred dollars? You think? Yeah, I think so. I I try. I'm trying to edit the two interviews I did last week myself though, and I'll only yeah. use Troy. That's his name. Focus Studio Productions for just the important videos. Okay. I, I, yeah, I'm it gonna, makes I'm sense. Do one about. I'm going to do one about how how much I charge and how I got that yeah. figure. I was um, thinking of the same the same sort of concept. If I've got a big important video where I've spent you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 hours filming, it might be worth, if I know it will be a big hit and I've got all good angle, it might actually be worth me going to pay five, seven hundred dollars or whatever. <coughs> For uh, you know a video editor because I know it's good, it's for good footage so how much and it's a in, good video. How much is that in real money? He just needs three hundred fifty quid. That's quite. That's cheap. <laughs> is that? Is it? Is it? It's, oh, well, I've been looking at five hours. What was it? Five hours? Yeah, you, you can't good do. Edit, no, I think that's editing. really cheap because I mean the last my video that's got out today, I ended up trimming that down to. About six minutes, say overall length. That's taken me two full days yeah. to edit it. 
Two eight hour days. Eight hour days. Sixteen hours. Sixteen hours. So for that six minute video, probably took about ten hours worth of filming. Wow, that's a good you cut it down to. Yeah, the thing a is, lot. the process. You, obviously, if you're doing it, it was how to do the camera arm. So you imagine that once I've shown, I'm going to put a chamfer on this edge here. I don't. You don't need to sit there watching me yeah. do all ten pieces, do you? Because it's you. You've got the no. you've got the idea. So the thing is, obviously that, and then obviously mm. then you're trying to do one thing, which means you have to set everything up to get your other camera angle and redo the same thing to get a different angle. So. What would have been, I reckon, I could have made that camera arm, I reckon, in about five hours. You can double that to film it in, take Yeah, that, it takes what, what happened? But if you've got someone there filming for you as well, you're not going to have to set up all your cameras all the time. Yeah. So I think that... Mm. It kind of it kind of doubles the time of a build, it do, almost it doubles when you're same. filming, doesn't it? Because you stop, you're getting an angle, you're thinking about the shot, thinking about if you're going to say anything... And then you're moving forward and you stop looking yeah. back at the camera and then reverse, go back to building the so book. I actually yeah, think that's it does really good value. Longer. If you're getting a video Definitely. out of that flat, say $700, and then you're getting up, because that's three days' work for me. Three not. Yeah. I thought that was ex- I thought that was expensive. I, thought I don't know. Going if you think about, if you think about I, I three days, anything. I'll charge out sort of two to 250 a day of pounds. So you're talking six yeah. to seven hundred pounds. So that's fourteen hundred dollars I'll be charging out for the same time. Yeah. So if you look at that mm. way, it's yeah, well so worth, it's it. worth its money. Is, yeah. Again, then you're not having to pay for all the camera. I mean, I've got several thousand pounds worth of camera gear. The guy's going to have your your Troy yeah. will have better cameras and lenses than I've got. So automatically, you're getting better quality images and all that, better sound, better everything, because you've got a professional doing it. I think that's, I think it's really good value, man. Mm. And clever. What about the filming side of things, AJ? Did you, uh, did you, or have you always been into like filming cameras, technology, etc., or you just started getting into it through this carpentry rabbit hole that you've come down? Yeah, I've always been into it. I was into it a lot when I was back in high school and primary school. I stopped for a long time and I watched other people on YouTube. I watched a lot of Scott Brown when I got into my... my oh, I know him. Process. New Zealand dude? New Zealand guy? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know Scott Brown, yeah. And and I always wanted to get into it, but I like, I like it a lot now because it's not just about me. It's more about educating other people. So I feel better about being on camera because I'm not trying to glorify myself. Like, hey, look at me. I'm... It's more about the educational side of it. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I had to kind of get over a, <clears throat> a mental hurdle like that. It wasn't so much about glorifying myself, it was just being nervous, being on you didn't, camera, you didn't even like talking. Video calls at first, did you? And it, oh, mate, wow. I didn't, I, I wouldn't even put a picture up on Instagram a year, like a year, a year and a half ago. And I just, in my head, I just got over it. I was like, look, I'm either going to be broke for the rest of my life or I can just go in within this full force and in five, ten years, I might be able to turn things around and really change my life. Because, it, uh, you know, social media and putting yourself out there on the internet is like modern-day marketing. It's not yeah. done in handshakes and meetings anymore well, it kind of is but you know 90 percent of it is on social you know if you're not putting yourself out there on the, on a brand you've not got your own brand out there no one knows it unless they personally know you from seeing you around on site or out in the street whereas you see especially with social media you see the people who are hungry and who are actually doing it like yourself like nick like Paul, and these people that you do see are the people that are really, really interested in their subject, who are really, really into their niche of, you know, joinery, furniture making, residential carpentry. They're the people that you want to be around, you know? Yeah. I think, yeah, I definitely think it's, uh, you know, it's a great thing to keep pushing the social media and, who knows where 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 we're actually going after social media? 
Kind of the internet is social media these days. Well, it's everything pretty you know much. I mean? You can't live without it these days. Everything's done. And the thing is, with the phone, with your phone as well. Yeah. I mean, you can run an entire business, your banking, your entire life off your iPhone that sits in your pocket, or your Android or whatever. It's it's. Yeah. yeah that's I good. mean, it's funny because I was talking to a, a love. Was it um, a one of my clients had a bit of a call out job this week. Lovely lady. Um, I actually recognised her. It was quite funny. She didn't obviously. She was actually one of the magistrates for Cheshire years ago, and I'd met her when I'd done some work over there. And um, oh, yeah. she was retired, and we're talking, and like we just talked, you know, having a bit general chit chat. I mean, she was maybe in her eighties, maybe early eighties, so of that older generation. And like, even I was saying to, but like, so what I do three D printing. Now, three D printing when I was in school was unheard of, and you'd be super rich to have it. I mean, we didn't even have broadband when I was in school, right? Yeah. So they actually had, <laughs> right? So I was doing my GCSEs when dial-up broadband became available to the masses. We used to have to use things called books. This, I don't think AJ knows what dial-up broadband is. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. but it's not just how things have changed that much. It is the first stage of the internet. You used to have to make a phone connection... And then your computer would be going, beep, it had to dial a connection to go to the satellite and your oh, wow. computer would be well, spitting so out some crazy it, noises. Like, and... So for her, a 3D printer was proper futuristic and unheard of when she was a child. But then it just shows yeah. you. Now, no, you've got one they, sitting because there. They, they don't cost much. You, you know, an underprint is 100, 100 quid, $200, you know what I mean? It's not a lot of money. And it's amazing what technology yeah. does and what you can do. And as you say, I mean, I mean f- yeah. films weren't around, and proper filming wasn't around early 1900s, was it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Have you seen those 3D printers that, that are on like a, a bed? So you can print out things that are like... Oh, yeah, the, uh, the belt ones. ones, yeah. It's on yeah. those belt ones. It prints on... Yeah, yeah. You could print out some good yeah, gigs oh, with that. I yeah. Think. It's one of those, I just do more smaller stuff and like I've just been printing out um rail holders for my Traxel for storage today. The last couple of days I've been doing that, but I just do the smaller oh, stuff. Yeah. I just got it for a bit of fun and a few little things, what to do. But yeah. You can actually I sort came across one on the uh, internet the other day. Two meters by one meter. That's an enormous bad that is, isn't it? Print anything that big uh-huh. and you can go it's like a meat cube. But I say it just shows you, yeah. you know, how far we go with you know, wow. technology is going and where it's where it's gonna take us. But I mean, so so how do you find being on camera? Because it's like I know Josh, as you said, he hated it. He didn't even like these little sort of um, internet Zoom calls. And was it about five months? Was it about five months ago, six months ago? We started talking, Josh, something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, but no, I love he, he was dead wary. He wouldn't be on. <laughs> he just didn't like. And I found it at first as well. In the first few videos, I, I started YouTube back in September, I think. Um, I found it dead weird being on camera and talking to a camera and. Now, I, it's normal. It's quite usual for me to have microphones, cameras and lights and everything all around it. it it's second nature now. It doesn't bother me. So how do, you, how do you find? Yeah. At first, yeah, at first I was a bit nervous talking to the camera in my first video. But then after that, I really believe in what I'm doing, that I'm actually helping people. So it's like putting yourself in the line of fire for people you're at, trying to help out like so i just that's how i got over it and then i also realized if all these people met me they would just see that anyway mm. like they would just see me and how i really am so, so if i'm on camera there's any, no, but it is very weird no but especially yeah yeah it's just a mental but hurdle I think, sometimes i think a bit of it, it is is obviously yeah. i think one thing you worried about josh at the start i mean i know we've all experienced it is all the trash talkers you get when you start up a new account there's a lot yeah, a lot of people out there. Nasty yeah, people. I got my first. Yeah, the first today I got one on Instagram. It was just probably the first bad one. Like, come on, let's hear it. Come on. He, <laughs> he said, uh, "When your life's so boring, you have to, or when your life's so sad, you got to film yourself putting up a bit of architrave." And then someone else said to him, "Oh, you, your life must be sad. You're projecting." And then he, uh, yeah, he just. What, but, he said something else about my life being sad and who uses a laser to measure their uh, the length of their 
Architraise, and I just put laughing emojis back, but I wasn't sure why. Mate, you'd be I mean, to make that. Comment. It's not some not something we're gonna get into today, but yeah. mate, you'd, you'd be surprised what lamps some people will go to to troll you. And I mean, I mean, Josh, Josh knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, it's amazing, mate, and it's very hard. And you know, we we do fall victim to it, all of us do. But the best thing you can do, mate, is get that little block button, hit that block button. And forget about it. I mean, unfortunately, yeah. we don't always do that, but that's what you need to do. Because yeah. end of the day, mate, if someone's taking the time out of their day to skit you, they're just a sad fucking individual, and they just need to be fucking sh- fucked yeah. off. Oh, and he yeah. said, he said, uh, stick. He said, keep your day job. Your video so, made me just fall a- asleep yesterday. <laughs> well, he watched the video. That's, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, my my. Thank you. Well, there you sometimes. go, so, mate. It is what it. No, nah, it's not, mate. The people that say this, they're just projecting their own pain back on. See the ge- back, back onto you. You know, I've had people say the terrible things. It's to just me. like horrible. Yeah, right. that, some things made me laugh. Someone's like said, "I deserve a hot day in the sun." I've been called a little girl. Oh, mate, I, it's like nasty thing. Like, but it's, I, stuff, it actually I don't, makes I don't, me laugh. You some know? of the stuff, yeah. it is laughable, don't get me wrong, but some of the stuff, especially if it gets a bit personal, um, it's a lot harder to sort of like try and use that, um, not rise to it almost. Do you know what I mean? Which, yeah. again, it, yeah. it's easier said than yeah. done sometimes. But, yeah, it's, it's – mate, it's – Yeah. The thing is, though, I mean, the fact of you growing so rapidly – and you're only new into the trade, it sort of proves that you're doing something right. Because otherwise, you, you can't trick that. Yeah, you can't trick thousands yeah. of people. Hundred well, percent. But you. But you no. Pe- there's no. Can say, there's no bullshit around two thousand followers people, in a yeah. week. Whatever. So people, How people long was it? A week. So I wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, they're just fucking assholes. And the people that do read the comments, you're like, oh, fuck. When I do read someone and put a nasty comment out of this guy's had a bad day, like, you know, some people are just scrolling. They've had a shit day. You know, they've just been dumped. You know, their babies took a shit in their suitcase or whatever. And uh, they scroll, they've seen you, and you've got the attack because, you know, the missus has just yeah. done whatever. It, yeah. it's, it's life, you know. That's a brave... Thing about social media is well. you are you put it's not just in your work circle you're criticized by people you work with it's the world you put you put it out there and you just let the attack come because you are going to get attacked and that's what i think is never take the good comments too personal either like don't let that get you up too high yeah, because don't let the bad ones take you down too much be like oh yeah cool Good comment, cool, bad comment. Like, yeah. just don't let it affect the ego in either way. That's true. That's so true. And then just do say, you, and then you'll just have success at the end of it. Yeah. I also am open to the criticism because I think it'll make me get better. And that's why I want to put the how to videos on YouTube. So someone will just say something, and I might make a second edition of that how to video because of their. Criticism, I might realise I'm doing well, something. Well, that's the thing. Slower. Yeah. At the end of the day, with it as well, especially because the, the funny, well, not the funny thing, but if we were to put a stud wall up now, you and me, we would do it totally different ways. Now, what's to say your way's right and my way's wrong, or my way's right and your way's wrong? As long as you get the same end product, it doesn't matter how you get there. It doesn't matter if it takes you 20 minutes longer than it takes me, or yeah. vice versa. It's about the end product. And especially if like you're making a big piece of furniture or whatever, as long as it's right at the end, does it matter how you got there or what brand of tools you used? Or that doesn't define who you are, does it? Do you know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> you, I mean, a tool snobby, yeah. thats a good one. You know what I mean? I get called all sorts because of, of what I use, but in this case, that, that doesn't make any difference. I don't need that brand of tools to make what I make. I can make what I won't make because I'm good. Do you know what I mean? And it is, it is yeah. very interesting because. The thing is, I mean, I've been in this, what, 25 years I've been in this now, for-ish. I'm still learning every day, mate. Every day is a school day, is what they say. So as you say, things I've done, I don't know, years ago, I'll do differently now. Because or I'll, I'll pick up sometimes. Yeah. I'll even be with, like, one of the young Wickham staff with, like, you on site. And they'll teach me a new trick because 
it's not something I will alert up. Yeah, and you'll no, be like, oh, you see things, I never thought of it like that. <laughs> I mean, they didn't have... Yeah, that's right. We didn't have little uh, power mounters when I, when I was on site back in, you know, 20 years ago. We didn't have them. I mean, now they do battery. Obviously, you can do battery. No, do we all have them, mate? No. Christ. We could use a router <laughs> if we wanted to see one of our big half-inch routers or quarter-inch routers, but... We Did they have uh, uh, low guns when you were growing up? Not, I didn't have... Didn't have uh, nail guns at first, mate. When I start training, you probably remember the very so first, first one. First that I, they were massive, you know right? Use? We use this thing wow. here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for people that aren't watching, I just picked up a hammer that I had in reach. I mean, um, yeah, I used to have um, S wing <laughs> the hammers, mate. The claw, the um, S hammers, the S wing S hammers. Um, we have to. We, have, we used to use, yeah. have to use four or five inch nails, mate. Everything was done by hand when I was learning. Um, past loads came out hell. probably six or seven years, five five years or so after I'd learnt everything. But that's the thing now. If you went to some people, go and knock me that stud up and there's no nail gun, they ain't doing it. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Where, where's the, uh, <laughs> you'd be like pulling the yeah. racks and nails apart of the Pazlo nails, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Knifing them down. I mean, obviously, I used it. Yeah, I've done that. You know, yeah. Framing nail now, but no, th- th- they weren't about me when I was on site first. So all these, so sometimes it is good that as oh, yeah. the new lads come through, they learn new things because of things like social media. It makes it a lot more accessible to learn new things. Is YouTube. If you don't know how to do something or you want yeah, to build something new, it's like, does. how do I? And so for my generation, yeah, um, the biggest one we use is YouTube, Google and YouTube to find out. The 20-year-olds, we're looking on, tic- they use TikToks. Yeah. How do I? And it's TikTok. So like your yeah. age, um, so your age, you're going to be using like TikTok. Josh is, is more Instagram and I'm more YouTube. And that's because you come through with different things from different ages. And that's how you learn things differently. And then, then you can use that to then teach on other platforms. Yeah, that, I, different things. Yeah, I definitely noticed the different ages on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, in the analytics, it told it told me like, yeah, most eighteen to twenty four year olds were on TikTok, and then Instagram. I could definitely see that it was up people that were a bit yeah. older from twenty four. Once you, uh, after thirty, it's normally yeah, about cool. thirty five onwards. Is YouTube twenty five to thirty five is Instagram, up to twenty five yeah. is TikTok, and after thirty five, so, and in between is Instagram. It's it's quite weird that how different yeah. generations use a platform to search or what they use the most, and that's why we have to be, yeah, as creators, we have to be on several platforms at once. Yeah. Do you guys make it any money from um, I off social media at the moment? Uh, I don't earn anything, and I've only just started to today. And I don't mean earning money. Uh, I've had people hit me up to post like work. I messaged a few people back and messaged me like six months ago. Work boots. Someone messaged me about. I thought I'd give them a try, I'd give them a shot. Um, another company, Brunt Workwear, they messaged me. Uh, I thought I'd give them a shot again. Um, yeah, so I just, people want to give me a few things here and there to try out, to yeah. p- post on my page. Um, today was, as funny you say, actually the day I said, you know, it's about time I've been doing it a year, a year now, a year and a half, yeah. this social media thing. So I feel like I've provided some value. So maybe, yeah. and you know, I'm not trying to sell it anyway. I'm just going to try it out and kind of review it. Yeah. You want to do like so a, I'm going to start doing no obligation reviews ones the one to go on for. products. That's cool. Definitely. Yeah. yeah so send, what do you mean? No yeah, obligation. I'll send it and then you don't have to do anything with it. Um, you use it and then you can say what you want about it. You can do what you want with it. You're not told that you have to. Because if they start saying to you, you must have a video five minutes long on this platform, two minutes on this, they've got to pay for that because they're asking you for something direct. So I, I mean I've had quite I've got quite a lot of no obligations yeah. things that I get. Um I've had some really good stuff as well. Um and I get a lot of 
stuff off like key blades and fixings. I'm constantly getting stuff off them. I've done for the last five years now. Um, but yeah, I, I all my deals are no obligation. I can do and say what I want with that, and that's the best way I feel. Oh, that's good. And then, yeah. Have you found a lot of businesses um, come to you through social media? I don't. It's a hard one because I'm sort of quite good at networking within social media, um, and I've made a lot of contacts over the last couple of years oh, within. Okay. So I have contacts not necessarily just in the UK. I have them all over Europe, in the States. So I've done quite... So networking's a very important thing yeah. to do. Especially if you want to grow within social media, you need to network. Hmm. Um, and that means networking outside your country. Mm. So for you, even though I know it's very Australian way that so you might do things, but same as the States or whatever, you need to be networking with people from the States. So like I'll network with a lot of people from the States because the thing is, that's where the audience that pays you the oh, most wow. from YouTube. So you want to get, so you want your views to be in the United States, yeah, that's true. the UK, then Australia. They're your three top that you want. Um, so even if you're making in Australia, you want more views in the States than you do in Australia because you'll make more money. Uh, likewise, I, even though I, obviously I've got a very high yeah. UK um, percentage of my viewers, but I get more money from the States, they pay more. YouTube pays more. Um, and likewise, oh, wow. one of my highest areas is actually India. But the problem with the Indian audience is I need 10 views per one state's view to make the same money. Yeah. So, oh, wow. Really? Yeah, so you get paid... Oh, it's different. You get, you get different, um, oh, okay. you pay different RPMs depending that. on what area, what country they are, and also what sector of the industry you're teaching in. Um, so obviously like mine will be education as well because carpentry comes under education because we do build how to videos same as yours so yeah so uh, yeah the only pay something like it's, 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 India's literally a tenth as the states so you need to be oh, you need to in the states and outside of Australia to if you want to make it on social media you have to work in several countries or across seven countries. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I feel. I feel like it compounds now. I've been. I've been doing it, coming on two uh, year and a half, two years. It compounds where I'm doing TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. This podcast is opening so many doors because mm. you know I'm. I'm meeting people. I'm doing it with Paul. Paul speaks to a load of people. We're getting guests on like you, Nick. Like it just. Oh, it's got- slowly like it's almost like a little tree it's almost like a little tree like that for like four or five years they're small but then pff, they just yeah. grow so it's it's compounding it's but it's, it's like, a slow it's, going at first yeah that's but true, yeah. a few so you, like, years in and you start flying man. next week yeah we've got our first american guest on so we're actually going to be making so, um, oh wow, who's that? I've forgotten who his name is now, <laughs> but we've got a couple lined up from the states anyway. But the thing is, there we're so so now we're going to yeah. be Austri- cause obviously the main, mainly Australia and the UK because that's where me, me and Josh are from, and that's where all our yeah. guests have been up to this date. Yeah, but from next week, we're going to start branching into the states now. By getting a states yeah. guest on, we'll then get a states audience or a little bit, and as we get more guests in the states, we can then. It's like if a little nuclear bomb map goes off. You go like bomb, goes. Bl- yeah. it, black yeah. label, yeah. black label carpentry co. He's guy, called. Yeah. He's sponsored, sponsored by Festival. So he's like, yeah. he's pretty big, seven thousand followers ish. So yeah, and just, just, yeah. and he's got a pretty cool story how so he got yeah, in the Festival and for growing and especially right. your your sort of content you're doing, which I think is really good. But you know your educational. How to get into it? I think that's. I think it's really good, actually. Um, I think you're right on the money there. But yeah, you definitely want to be Thank you. broadening your horizons and networking a bit on a wide so scale. Just, I think. Yeah. Just as we're wrapping up, AJ, where do you see like the vision of AJ Carpentry going? What's your What's your next two to five year plan? Sort of how are you? So, what are you heading? What direction are you going? Yep, so I want AJS Carpentry to be a separate educational 
brand and then I'll have my own construction company, which I'll call something else. But I want them both to be running by themselves and AJS Carpentry will have like start having content for tiling and heaps of other things. So so okay. I'll probably end up and a lot of educational videos for how to make money as a contractor, like when you're a sole trader and all that kind of thing. That'll be AJS Carpentry and then my own business, which I'm not sure what I'll call it yet, will just be building new homes, probably in the area that I'm in right now. And doing it with other builders and clients here and there. Yeah, it does. Okay, yeah, yeah cool. That sounds nice great, man. Got that sounds real for good. Sure. So, where can everyone find you, mate? Just to pl- plug your Instagram and your TikTok and wherever else you want to plug. Thanks. It's AJS Carpentry on YouTube, Instagram, Super. and TikTok. Yeah. I'm actually getting you subscribe on YouTube this morning. Excellent. Yeah. So that's just my initials. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I cool. really need a place to watch uh, Good time to call it. So thank you very much for coming on. Um, yeah, it's been great. Again, everyone, yeah, if you have any questions me. or comments, please leave them. We shall get back to you. Uh, this will be going out on all major platforms as per usual. Any final words, Josh? No, it's been a great podcast. Thank you very much. Excellent. See you guys. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.